Seven signs you're a law student. You spend more money on all those heavy books than you do on food. And you try to only highlight the important parts, but you end up highlighting page after page after page. You find yourself constantly giving legal advice to friends in need. Okay, hang on one minute. Right, now tell me all about it. You always read the small print before making mm. any purchase. Mm. You see the world in terms of agents, claimants, contracts, and cases. You've never lost an argument. And the winner of our big debate competition is... Jessica! At least, you'll never admit that you have. You start answering most questions by saying, It depends. How are you today, madame? Well, it depends. Are you ready to order? It depends. Uh, okay. Uh, perhaps some drinks first? Really, it kind of depends. You know what a tort is, and we're not talking about the dessert. So, what do you think of the tort? That's not a tort. This is a tort. Now that's a tort. Hi folks, welcome to Writing Cats and Friends. I'm Ken Ween, one of your co-hosts, and with me today is Celeste Vertical Duckworth and Monica Brinkman, my co-hosts. And our special guest today is Hal Corky Kessler. And we're going to be talking about movies and entertainment. And I did want to mention, I have a friend with me today also. Uh, this is Spotted Fido, a very pro-American dog, as you can see. <laughs> Hello, Fido. <laughs> and wait, 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 wait. And I have Mickey Mouse. Oh, Mickey. Hey, hey, Mickey. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> today, today, I have a poem to read about the movies is by the great American writer, Frank O'Hara, who's known mostly for, for you know, journalism writing and short stories and things like that. It's called Ave Maria. Mothers of America, let your kids go to the movies. Get them out of the house so they won't know what you're up to. It's true that fresh air is good for them, for the body, what about the soul that grows in darkness, lost by silvery images? And when you grow old, as grow old you must, they won't hate you. They won't criticize you. They won't know you'll be in some glamorous country they first saw on a Saturday afternoon of playing hooky. They may even be grateful to you for their first sexual experience, which only cost you a quarter and didn't upset the peaceful home. They will know where candy bars come from and gratuitous bags of popcorn, as gratuitous as leaving the movie before it's over with a pleasant stranger whose apartment is in the Heaven on Earth building near the Wiggensburg Bridge. Oh, mothers, you will have made the little tykes so happy because if nobody does pick them up in the movies, they won't know the difference. And if somebody does, it'll be sheer gravy. And they'll have been truly entertained either way, instead of hanging around the yard or up in their room hating you prematurely, since you won't have done anything horribly mean yet, except keeping them from the darker joys. It's unforgivable, the latter. So don't blame me if you won't take this advice. And the family breaks up and your children grow old and blind in front of a TV set, seeing movies you wouldn't let them see when you were young. <laughs> wow. Let that be wow. a warning to them. <laughs> I want to dedicate that po reading of that poem to my first love, Gina Lola Brigida. Oh, wow. wow. At the movies. <laughs> oh, yes. Not Sophia Lauren, huh? 
<laughs> oh, all of them. Well, you know, well, 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 first of all, it's great to be with you both again. And I guess it's not my head this time only. No. <laughs> you, you, full glorious technicolor. Yeah, okay, folks, uh, we, had, we had done a... Uh, what was the woman you first loved at the movies, Hal? Yeah? Uh, my first love? Yeah, the woman you first loved. Oh, what what um, what got me into the business? Is that your question? No. Who was the first woman on the screen you fell in love with? Yeah. Which one was that? There's nobody that I fell in love with on the screen. To be honest with you, uh, I had I I had a movie that that enthralled me that I was glued to the TV and you probably have never heard about it. Okay. It's called A Thousand Clowns. Oh, of course. With Jason oh, yeah. Robots. Yeah, with Jason Robots. And everybody yeah. get up and play volleyball. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that was a movie that so enthralled me, that got me so interested in the, the films. It, uh, look, as a kid, my uncle would take me to the movie theater, 25 cartoons, okay? Uh, Tom and Jerry and all those things, 25 car cartoons. So, so I was a cartoon fanatic. I'd go see cartoons growing up. Uh, I saw no motion pictures, but uh, boy, did I see cartoons. <laughs> and, and I've got on a reel, the first Abbott and Costello movie, that was ever made, that I have an old time projector and occasionally I crank it up. But, 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 uh, and I was an Abbott and Costello fan to the degree. And look, I never wanted or knew anything about the film business. I never knew anything about the theater business. I was fine. I was litigating cases. I was a, a I was an assistant Cook County State's Attorney in the Criminal Division. And you, you know that I've been shot at twice in a courtroom and a bomb put in my car during those six years. But, but, but I knew nothing about the theater business. I knew nothing about the film business. I just sort of fell into it. Well, if your uncle had taken you to see James Cagney movies <laughs> instead, instead of cartoons, you might have known more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, so I grew up in South Shore, the south side of Chicago, and he would come and he would take me to the Jeffrey Theater on 71st and Jeffrey. I still remember going with them. And again, 25 cartoons for 25 cents. You couldn't yeah. beat it. You can't. Well, yeah. uh, Celeste, did you have a crush on anybody in the movies? Did I ever what? Have a crush on somebody in the movies. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I would say from uh, when I was a kid, my favorite crush was uh, Rock Hudson. Oh, who turned out to be gay. Uh, and okay, I, you know, I, like all those, I like all those older actors, Yul Brynner, you know, um, uh, uh, Ricardo Monteblanc, that was my mom's crush. So, you know, watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Monica, what was your first crush? Okay. Cary Grant. And Who? there's another There's another one that most people wouldn't think, but um, it was Vincent Price. Oh, Vincent, Vincent Price. Price. Oh, my God. Dracula. Vincent Price. Dracula. Wow. <laughs> Vincent Price. Now, that's a okay. Monica. Oh, I thought he was so sexy looking. And he, he well, look, 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 as I told you, people, when I brought Russell Crowe's band to Chicago, and they played at the House of Blues, this is a long time ago, his right. band was called 30 Odd Foot of Grunt. And he got on stage at the House of Blues in Chicago and women threw panties at him. So ah. before he even set a song. Like People Tom Jones. Him. What? It's like Tom Jones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I should tell you, Celeste, Yul Brenner 
I, I don't know. Anybody else ever see him live? No. I, no, I never did. no. I got to see you or Brenna. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I did. I saw him live in a play. Yeah. 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 The King and I was the one I saw. Uh, him. Yeah. And, the, you know, he was, they were doing Shall We Dance? That wonderful yeah, Shall We Dance. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have to tell you, at that moment, my wife turned to me. And of course, Brenna was quite old by this point, and she says, "I'm not sure he is." Uh, the king and I, right? The king and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was, yeah. I can, I can understand that crush. Yeah, uh, they the say friend, that. And people... this Vincent Price, particularly, believe it. I think Vincent Price had a, a sexual energy to him. Oh, I do too. <laughs> well, well, well. I once won a jury trial in the suburb of Chicago when I was trying civil litigation cases because the, the jury was convinced by the foreman who was a female who I find out later had a crush on me. And she called me to meet her. And I said, I, I can't. Uh, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm a happily married person, <laughs> but uh, thank you. There you go. And your wife and your wife never knew, right? No, I told she her. Does I'll, I'll give you, you another uh, funny story. Uh, I have a great wife. I've been married for forty six years. Okay, um, and uh, we sort of I met in high school, but that's a whole different story. Okay, so now I'm at the Cannes Film Festival one year, and I get invited to stay on a yacht in the Can Harbor by a client of mine. And one night I, I fall asleep on the deck and I wake up and there's a, a lady on top of me. <laughs> and I said to her, I, I, please get off. I think it's a great compliment. I, I appreciate your efforts, but I'm not a player. Next year at Cannes, I had a huge table at a beach club, a round table on the beach at Cannes, and I invited her to come to our table. And my wife was there at the table. So I said to my wife, I want to int introduce you to the lady who was on top of me at Cannes last year. And my wife turned to her and said, I feel sorry for you. Oh. <laughs> and and the woman responded. Well, uh, the, 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 the woman turned red, purple. <laughs> that is cute. <laughs> so, so if you ever come to a film festival that I'm at, we have so much fun. I mean, we really. I mean, it's business, but we have so much fun doing this and uh i'm going to invite you to a to our virtual can panels on july 10th and then on the night we have a pajama virtual party that's oh, networking yeah. and then the next day we have a, a pitch contest and the winner of pitches gets forty thousand of free service in their movie so that's wow. us giving back nice okay. And then, and then, if you come to Sundance in January, that'll be probably the first live uh, film festival. At the house that I rent, I host a Chicago food party. I oh. fly pizzas and hot dogs and chocolate to Sundance. Wow. Well, that all sounds very good. Sounds perfect. Yeah. So, so, so Jim Pasternak came one year. And he was on one of my panels, and uh, he gets to the house that we're staying at, and unfortunately, he passed out. So we had to take him to the hospital, low red blood cells, but he was fine. But oh, that's uh, good. <laughs> yeah. To folks, just in case you don't know, Jim, who is a wonderful teacher of film writing uh, in LA, is also a friend. Celeste, you haven't had the pleasure, but no, I haven't, yeah. myself, and he has been. He's uh, a great guy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're sort of frozen. Yeah. Well, how, how, how did you get into 
law within this industry? How did I get into it? Yeah. You said very, it was by accident. Very accidentally. All right. So uh, I think uh, you you knew this, uh, but, but I'll certainly talk to talk about it. I was in my office one day, and uh, someone walks in and says, "Do you want want to invest in a play, a theater?" And I said, "I know nothing about the business. Tell me what you want to do." And then I worked that into the lawyer and executive producer for wonderful theater projects. I knew nothing about the theater business. Driving Miss Daisy, Steel Magnolia, Shirley Valentine, I'm not Rappaport, Frank. So a guy by, by, uh, uh, by the name of Kevin Dowling, D-O-W-L-I-N-G, he's now very big directing television shows. And he said to me, do you want to get involved in the film business? I said, I know nothing about the film business. What do you want to do? He said, well, there's a play off Broadway, Cherry Lane Theater, called The Some of Us, S-U-M, The mm -hmm. Some of Us, written, okay, uh, by a very well-known Australian gay writer. And um, I said, Here's what I'll do. I'll get involved and help you get investors if you give the investors some of the profit you make on the play. That's now to Cherry Lane Theater. We have nothing to do with the play except that I wanted to have some income coming in if the investors were going to invest in the development phase of the film, not in the actual film. He said, fine. So I worked an agreement. Now they they had uh, Tony Goldwyn and Richard Hatch. Tony Goldwyn played the gay person, you know, uh, uh, in the play. The, some of us first positive gay uh, play at that time. And and um, and a guy by by the name of Stevens wrote. Uh, David Stevens wrote. The, the the play mm -hmm. and then uh, Kevin Dowling said to me we want to make a movie of the sum of us and uh, then we started working on I raised the, the development money I think it was three hundred and sixty five thousand dollars at the time and then we went on to, to try and figure out who we're going to get and where we're going to shoot it. And uh, we had people tell us they wanted to shoot it in the United States and get uh, uh, Tom Cruise and Paul Newman. And I said, it's not an American story. It's an Australian story. David Stevens wrote it. Uh, he, uh, he wrote Breaker Moran too. Uh -huh. But David Stevens wrote it to have an homage to, to Australia. So then we start working on that and we find an Australian uh, company um, to be part of it and to produce it with us. Because if you're going to go to Australia to, to film it, you want to have an Australian partnership. And parenthetically, I'm very still very good friends with to the people in Australia that were my partners there. Anyway, so I called Tony Goldwyn up and say, Tony, we're going to do a movie. It's going to be filmed in Sydney. We'd like you to create, because he had won the Obie Award for Best Actor for the Some of Us. We'd like you to recreate the role in the Some of Us film. We're going to shoot it in Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. All right. Next thing I get a call at three in the morning because there's an 18 different uh, 18 hour difference in time yes and and the government apparently a gentleman who I didn't know named Russell Crow stormed into the Australian government who was giving us 40 percent for the movie and said to them how can you invest in a movie with an American actor 
I want to play the role and I, and I live in Australia. Wow. So I get a call from the Australian yeah. government and said, fire Tony Goldwyn. You, we're yeah. going to bring in Russell Crowe. Oh, I had to get on the phone, talk, call Tony Goldwyn and say, I have to let you go. We can't uh, have you, you in Sydney, blah, 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 blah. There's this actor named Russell Crowe. I don't know him, blah, 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 blah. Right. So we have Russell Crowe now and we have Jack Thompson. And my Australian, and then I had someone living in Chicago who, who I won't mention, a very wealthy uh, individual friend of mine that sent a letter to me. He committed the other 60%. Oh, now we have a movie. Okay, we have 40% from Sydney. Okay, so uh, about a month before we're going to start filming, my investor dies. Oh no! Oh, wow. Okay, so now I have to okay, call them. Story. Okay, so now I have to call them and say, "Look, we got no movie. Uh, uh, you're forty percent, but I don't have sixty percent. My guy died, and and so to make a long story short, uh, in about a week or two, I'm the only one ever to get." And still today, ever to get the Australian government to fund 100% of the movie. Wow. $3.2 million back then in 1994. They believed in it. Okay, so, so, um, and now I go to Australia. I go to Sydney. And I meet Russell Crowe for the first time. Someone introduces to me the day that I get there. And I remember this just like I remember anything. I was wearing an NBA Finals baseball cap. Okay? <laughs> and Crow doesn't say nice to meet you. Now, I'm the executive producer. I'm the one that, that really agreed to have him be in the movie. Not right. nice to meet you. He says to me, I want your hat. I said, <laughs> what? He said, I want your hat. I said, who do you think you're talking to? You're not going to get my hat. So every day on the set, I want your hat. I said, you don't understand. You're not getting, finally, I said to him, on the last day that I was going to be there, we will meet. And I will give him my hat, but he has to give me something that's equally important to him. And we will exchange. So the night before I wrote inside of the brim of the cap, how great it was to meet him. I mean, we partied with him and, and uh, with the co-star, Jack Thompson, we partied every night. So I said, it was great to meet you and blah, blah, blah. And I wrote several lines on the inside of the cap. So we go to, to do it and he gives me his Rabbitohs hat, which is a rugby team that he was a big fan of. And he, in the inside of the brim of that hat, he wrote stuff also, how great it was to meet me and spend time with me, and ah. blah, 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 blah. I still have the, the hat. So we exchanged. To make a long story short, when my son graduated um, uh, college before he went to law school, Russell Crowe brought him to Sydney to do the politicking to buy a rugby team named the Rabbitohs. Oh. <laughs> so it went full circle. Isn't that something? You know, you never know what's going to happen when you meet someone, do you? So that was my first movie, the first positive gay content movie. So now to finish the story on that movie, um, we, we remember I had to let Tony Goldwyn go. Yes. We screened it in L.A. at the Sunset Five Theaters. I was there. Five distributors wanted to distribute this movie. Oh. 
But the ultimate one that my my whole team went with was Goldwyn Studios. Tony Goldwyn's father. Right. Okay. okay, so now <coughs> we start to do the marketing for the movie. We thought that Samuel Goldwyn Jr. knew how to market this movie. He did not. First of all, it won the Academy Award in Australia for Best Picture. It beat Muriel's Wedding Out. Crow won Best Actor for it. So now we got a lot of publicity we can do for the movie, bringing it into the United States. What Goldwyn does is in the New York Times, the Wall Street Dur Journal, the Chicago Tribune, and all the major papers, he puts a little ad, the littlest ad you can put in and says the following, the gay date movie of the year. It <laughs> killed us. It killed us. Uh, the mm -hmm. problem, the what problem shame. was that he, in this country, of course, the idea of gay. Yeah, so, so we lost so much business. He didn't even put, voted the best film uh, at the Australian Academy Award. Didn't be, put the Crow won the Academy Award for best. That's like he so wanted it to fail. He, they didn't know how to market a gay content movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we decided that someone had to call Sam Goldwyn Jr. So I did. I called him up and, and Sam, this, this is quirky, hi quirky, how are you? And I said, Sam, I have to tell you something with all due respect. My dead hamster could have done a better job, better job than the movie that you did. And then he said, "I'm sorry to hear that. Will you look to me to distribute future movies? I mean, or write to the next name." And I said, "I will definitely do that, but under drastically different circumstances." Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sam. And that was my one conversation with Samuel Goldwyn Jr. What a shame! <laughs> well, you know, in those days, it was yeah, still. So. We're talking about Rock Hudson earlier. You know, in those days, gay and movies were like, oh my God! And the idea was, I think, that, okay, there's this little niche of gay people that we'll market the movie to, but you know, we can't be seen as pro-gay. Right. Yeah, there yeah, were probably was probably. A Brave. Well, it wasn't a gay movie. It, it had gay content, but it was but it, not a gay movie. Right. But still, look. But that was my first movie, and then I uh, then I started to get a movie project and movie projects. No more theater because theater doesn't run on business principles. Uh, mm -hmm. Film does. It's film business. And uh, then, and then, following forward several years, a bunch of independent filmmakers came to see me and said, um, "We want you to be involved in something called 181, and we and we want a federal incentive going forward, and we want your help." I said, "Get out of my office! It's never going to happen." They did. About a month later, they come back and say, look, we got four senators that are going to sponsor this section of the Americans Job Creek Act of 2004, and it's Senator Hatch, Snow, Lincoln, and I forget the fourth senator, but they were from non-film states. I mm. said, that's a good start. That's a very good start when you're not concentrating on film states. And to make a long story short, I was one of the early people that was involved in the federal incentives under Section 181, where you could wipe out tax paying uh, investors. You could wipe out or substantially wipe out their federal taxes by investing and spending 75% in the United States and 25% can be in any foreign country. So you can package the incentives in, in, in foreign countries. So. Nobody knew about it. It comes out in October of 2004. Serbia, plus 38165. And, and, and um, so 
the variety, the film magazine, for her variety, puts a little article on page two and talks about 181. And they say that there's a bottom limit. It has to be at least 1 million and it can go up to 15 mm -hmm. or 20. And it was wrong, patently wrong. There's no minimum. It could be a dollar movie. There's no minimum whatsoever. So I had to correct. And then I went on to be known and I helped the IRS write certain rules for 181. And I have wiped out to date about 250 people's federal taxes. Wow. wow. So, so what are some of the movies that have been made using that tax rate that people would, our audience would know, hey, wow, I'm glad that he did that for that movie. Well, 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 look, uh, Jim Pasternak on Certifiably Jonathan, he used it. Okay. He, oh, he wow. got investors b because of me, because of 181. And, uh, and uh, that there are several other movies that I've grandfathered for 181. But if you look on IMDb Pro and see those movies that I've executive producer on, I, I think all but one used 181. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I just last helped to get it extended to the end of 2025. Well, good. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear about me. Uh, I'd, I talk about it when you hear me talk. Okay, uh, tell me about Vertical Life Magazine. <laughs> oh, Vertical Life Magazine. We're a media and communications company. It was a magazine that my husband started to uh, promote positive lifestyles, promote positive, uh, innovative uh, ideals that creative people were doing around the world and sharing them with uh, people. So it's an online magazine. We do have two hard copies of uh, different other magazines, uh, one's for kids and the other one's for women. And uh, then we we do broadcasting too. I'm a host on this show and we so have- So you're gonna have in the magazine? Is that what you're telling me or no? I'm saying what? Are you going to have me in your magazine oh, or not? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So that's uh, that's what we do. We share we share with people all over. Okay. Uh, so I'm, uh, okay. I'm meeting some great. I'm meeting great individuals, hanging out with uh, Ken and, and uh, Monica. So. Uh, 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 okay, so I'm going to invite you to my television show. Oh, okay. <laughs> on on April twenty first. Uh huh. Uh, Ken, uh, I mean, um, Lou Goldstein, who does a, a television show in, uh, in California, is going to mm -hmm. do a half an hour interview with me. Wow. And I'll send you, Monica, uh, uh, did I send it to you, uh, how, how to see the show? I, no. Okay, so I will send you uh, the link and you can share right. it. Okay. Okay, because uh, you won't see it live, but there are times that you can uh, see it. Okay, that sounds good. So it's going to be an internet-based. A uh, what? Yes. Internet-based. Right. Uh, no, 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 no. It, it, it's going to be a television show that you can sign on to and watch. Okay. Great. When you say sign on to, you mean by your computer. Uh-huh. Uh so I, I'm going to, in fact, I, I, I'll do it right now. You'll see me do it. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, <laughs> Turn to his wait, 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 wait. I'm going to. Well, um, well okay. Don't be bad. <laughs> okay, so hold on a second. Lou Goldstein, here we go. I'm sending it to you, Monica, right now. All right. Monica Brickman. Just sent. All right. Thank you. Sounds okay. good. Okay. All right. So look, um, you can ask me any question uh, about the film business. Yes, I'm happy to answer them. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> but, 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 
Well, you know, when you're saying when you're saying going out and getting the financing for movies, I mean, how is it just you going out and just talking to individuals um, about investing in the movie? Uh, well, I have investors. I, okay. I, 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 you will see some of them at, at, at the Cannes virtual panel, but wear fun pajamas for that night. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, but, but but I will get you in free, so you don't have to pay the fifty bucks. Okay, okay, all, okay. Right. all right. Although fifty isn't much, but 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 I'll get you guys in free. Well, that's yeah. so nice of you. I tell uh, okay. you. Okay, you know, uh, okay, okay. You had said something about. And, and then and then, if you want to broadcast from there, we can set up a broadcast. That would be a cool thing to do. That would be fun. We'll do I mean, that. for virtual, uh, for virtual panels. So you'll see all the panels. You pick what you want to do, and we can set it up. Which okay. panels? I'll tell you the panels that I'm doing. All right. I'm doing a documentary panel. I'm doing a uh, how to make your movie panel. I'm doing a funding panel. I'm doing a panel on distribution. I, I am doing a panel on music. I'm doing a panel. I think that's it. Uh, but but five or six panels. Um, oh, we're doing one with casting directors too. Okay, so we're 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 give, oh, and we're doing one on screenwriting probably. Wow, that's wonderful! <laughs> wow. Uh, we're doing most of them Saturday, but we'll do a couple Sunday morning too. Okay, oh, yeah. because we have too many. All of those, man. That's yeah. Lot. Okay. So you'll get an Eventbrite. When you get the Eventbrite, let me know so I can tell the promoter that I want three passes. I'm I I I'm going to need the three names from you to be emailed to me. I, I know them, but but I need the three names and then I'll send the promoters to send you something to sign in for free. Great. Okay. Thank you. Right. I want to say, how has helped this industry? Okay. So, 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 okay. So you, so I can guarantee any investor who's a taxpayer or company who's a taxpayer, uh, a recovery of their money regardless of any business the film gets about 80 cents on the dollar. There's no other business you can do that. You package the federal incentive with a good state incentive and you do your post in Toronto, Canada, where you pick up another 6%, you get about 78 to 80 cents on the dollar. Wow. That's not bad at all. No. That's not bad at all. So you folks, you're guaranteed you're not going to lose too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so... So, um, so uh, look, I'm, I'm first of all, I'm very thrilled to be on your show. And when you put it on YouTube or wherever, let me know so I can send it to people after you do your great editing. I'm sure you do a great job to make me look better than I am. <laughs> um, How could we make you look better? <laughs> okay. What we do now is remember, we just superimpose. <laughs> there you go. Let's get there. Yeah, we get Mickey. Mickey on. is back. Pose Mickey on you. <laughs> M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. I grew up on it. Donald Mickey knows. <laughs> I even called my cat Mickey Mouse. <laughs> what? What? I called my cat Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I hate cats. I hate cats. Oh, I love them. <laughs> uh, okay, I love dogs, but they're so I love cats dogs are so too. sneaky. I don't like cats. That's what's so ah. <laughs> Mine are the most lovable ones you'd ever see. So. Yeah, okay. It's how okay. You well, 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 look. Um, uh, by the way, your fr friend Jim Pasternak will be a a on a panel uh, during uh, a virtual can. Oh, great. Um, nice. And but, but then the best networking festival, and you can do a live broadcast from there too, is Sundance. 
Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, it's usually January 20th or, or something. And should that be live, you guys should come find a place to stay in Park City, not outside. Okay. Not in Salt Lake. Okay. It's a half an hour to an hour drive. Right. And Park City, you there's no place to park your car. So there are cabs, there are shuttles, free buses, wherever you want to go. Wow. Okay. Nice. Okay. But, and as soon as I know what house we're going to get, I'll give you the address. And we have our Chicago food party. So I get there on a Saturday of opening weekend. So I stay till Thursday. That, 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 okay, wait, wait, wait. I, I have to turn the, the, this off. Okay. All right. And and uh, I have my Chicago food party that Sunday. Okay. Yeah. And, then, and then people always come to our house. A house is an open house to meet people, to network with. Uh, that's what Sundance is about. So, now, if someone wants to invest, what? If someone wants to invest money, yes, on a project, how do they contact you? They, they can okay, C O R K Y. It's my same email. It's the same okay. email. So email you? Okay. Uh, yes. Or or they can call me at three one two nine two five. Two one one zero, okay. But 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 I've got great projects. I've got I, I've got projects with great people. I'm doing a picture with Rudy Langless. I'm doing three of them. Who you may not know who who Rudy Langless is, but he is an Academy Award producer for a movie called The Hurricane with mm. Denzel, Sugar Hill and Redemption, and Hotel Rwanda. Wow. And I'm doing sure. a film based on a book called Miles and Me. It's a friend of Miles Davis in his last stage of his life. Yes. And, and we've got uh, Denzel Washington to direct. And we've got, I can't name who the the actress is, but it's a very well-known Academy Award actress. But, but I'm working on that. Then I'm working on a um, film uh, a couple more projects, um, and and uh, 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 about about James Marley. Oh yeah, I would but, love that. But not his music, his his life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we're do, doing a movie um, uh, uh, that I'm doing doing with him uh, a third movie that we're going to grandfather under one eighty one. Um, and so, so I represent uh, also Bill Duke, who starred in Predator, and he's a big director, and he's going to be on my panels too. Wow. Um, and we've got Diane Ladd; she's going to be on our panels. This is great. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Tony Shaloub and Jason Alexander, maybe. And oh, God, Jason he's Alexander. great. He's so talented, Jason. Hey, you know, you know, people don't give him that credit. Folks, I've got to break in here to remind you all we're talking with Hal Corky Kessler. We're talking about movies, in case you hadn't picked up on that, and <laughs> entertainment. And uh, we're kind of running out on time. So I just wanted to remind everybody that please, if you enjoyed this podcast, do follow uh, Writings Chats and Friends on YouTube so you find out about all of them. And seriously, I mean, if you have some money you want to invest in a movie, uh, I cannot think of a better way to direct that money than either call Hal directly, email him directly, or if you forget the, the contact, you can do reach out to us through our show, and we'll get you in touch with him. Absolutely. Well, well look, look. I know I'm the best interviewer you have. So <laughs> you just... <laughs> no, 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 no. You gotta have confidence. Yeah, well, <laughs> 
And, and I have to say that because, uh, you know, it, one of the things people don't realize is that one, we are about the diversity of life. And so, you know, next week we may be talking about something totally different. And, and that's what makes the show worth following on, on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Now, I had one, you know, I, we do have to end, and, and I was wondering if you had, if a young person came to you yes. today and said, I want a career in show business, particularly in movies. Yes. What is some of the advice you would give that young person? Uh, the, the best advice I can tell that young person, it's a business. And it runs on business principles. It, it takes some money to get into this business because it is a business. So no, people might like your project. People, okay, but, but if you want a mentor, that's a whole different story. I can mentor someone who convinces me I should mentor him mm. or her. Okay. It doesn't matter race, religion, but I have to, they have to demonstrate why I should spend the time. Okay. Yeah. But putting that aside, everyone forgets the fact that this is a business and, and business takes money. And uh, if they want to move forward on projects, it's going to take money. Yeah. It, it, it's going to take money in the development stage, which is like building a foundation on a building. It's going to take money to build your team in the development stage. That's building the floors in a building. It's going to take when you get people to come to rent you, you, your offices, that's people coming to see your movie. It runs and each stage costs money. And then if you need another 20% on the top in the real estate business, it's called mezzanine loan. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the film business, it's called gap financing. So we run on the same principles as a business would. And every movie is its own business. Keep that in mind. Now that makes sense. A lot of uh, people, do, and you're right, people don't understand it. Yeah. Now, you know, this brings up something I think is really very important. And those of us, and I'm thinking here mostly about you, Celeste, who have an opportunity to talk to and mentor young people and introduce them to the idea. Most people, when they think, oh, I want to go into the movies, they right. think they're going to get up there and dance and sing, or they think they're going to write the great American script, or they think maybe they might think that they're going to operate the camera. But, you know, there really are a lot of people who are in the business end and they're making a lot of money and they're making, they're really very responsible for making the great movies. If you don't have a good producer, if you don't have a good, if you don't have a good bookkeeper, <laughs> have a good banker if you don't have a good secretary right. you, don't have, you know you don't get that movie made well, well, well the real definition of what i do i'm an executive producer i'm right. the business and legal arm to the creative arm and people have to understand at certain time i'm not creative but they're going to need to hit a brick wall with creativity unless they partner up with someone in business and legal uh, it's very it's very it's very important but but at the end of the day um there are very smart young people and they're in fact bill duke in california ha has a youth uh, program where he helps young people in the film business it's bill duke foundation so That's if great. if you have someone that lives in la that you want to refer to bill duke young person uh, let me know because he gives them a chance he does they don't have to pay he has a foundation oh, like, if he believes in them huh <laughs> yeah all right so but but i'm in chicago and it's uh, a beautiful sunny day today 
Yeah. And uh, we've had days in the 70s, and we're very fortunate that uh, that uh, we're getting climate that we've never had. So talk about uh, climate change. Yeah, crazy. Uh, we're uh, we're going to be tropical soon. Uh, <laughs> the whole United States will be soon. Yeah, something <laughs> people are going to be talking about going to sunny Chicago. <laughs> uh, Monica, Monica, did you get my email? Uh, I'm not sure which one, but I'll check. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so at, at the end of the day, I'd love to carry on this conversation at some later date. Absolutely. There's a lot more that we can talk about, but I'm no one to talk to someone about a camera, a, 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 how to operate a camera. Well, I'm no one. We I'm have someone who can make someone's dream come true if they have the right project. Right. That's, That's a great wonderful. Idea. So let us, folks, remember that again, we've been talking with Al Corky Kessler about the business end of making movies, but also <laughs> we're looking forward to maybe sharing a pajama party in Khan or uh, on Chicago pizza at Sundance. <laughs> and <laughs> it's been just great talking with you today. Yeah, well, well, listen, I, I, well, listen, I would love to entertain all three of you. Um, and the, the only way that I could pay back, uh, pay forward is by by letting you be at the forefront of some of the things that I'm doing when no one else is. Great. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you both very much. And uh, I, and if you ever want me to come back for mm -hmm. a return visit, just let me know. We will do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Al. But no, it's quirky. Please, please. Okay. Oh, that's right. Bad me. <laughs> and Thank bye, you, and bye, me. Goodbye, Mickey. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, goodbye. Bye, Mickey. Bye, Corky. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. He's wearing a German helmet. Don't say anything to offend him. We need that plane. Friendly kids, I was never a member of the Nazi party. I'm not responsible. I only followed orders. Who are you? Why do you persecute me? My papers are in order. I love my adopted country. Oh, beautiful, few species, guys, few Relax, relax, Mr. Liebkin. We're not from the government. We came here to talk about your play. I play? You mean Springtime, sir? You know who? Yes. What about it? We love it. We think it's a masterpiece. That's why we're here. We wish to produce it on Broadway. Broadway? Oh, oh, joy of joys. Oh, dream of dreams. I can't believe it. I must tell the birds. Birds! Birds! Birds, do you hear? How do birds and heads and smell gum? Do you hear? We are going to clear the fear's name. Deutschland, Deutschland, Dübel alles, Dübel alles in der Welt. Mr. Liebkin, Mr. Liebkin, please. People can hear. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dandy. A Yankee Doodle. This is not a place to talk. Come, we'll go to my flat. No case from like this. Calls for schnapps. You know, not many people knew it. That the Führer was a terrific dancer. Really, I never dreamed that... That is because that you were treated in! Well, it was in the Allied propaganda! Such filthy lies! They told lies! But nobody ever said a bad word about Winston Churchill, did they? No, when we're sweating! Churchill!
You see, she gas. Look, it's plenty. And it's rotten painting, rotten. He could, there was a painter. He could paint an entire apartment in one afternoon, two coats. Yes, he They couldn't even say Nazi. He won't say Norris. Norris. He was a Norris. He was Nazi. Churchill! Exactly why? That may tell you this! Then you're getting this straight from the horse! Hitler was better looking than Churchill. He was a better dresser than Churchill. He had more hair. He told funnier jokes than he could dance the pants of old Churchill. Exactly why? Churchill! <laughs> it's Churchill. That's exactly why we want to produce this play. To show the world the true Hitler. The Hitler you loved. Yeah. The Hitler you knew. Yeah. The Hitler with a song in his heart. Sign here and make your dream a reality. Here it is. Springtime for Hitler. Signed, sealed, and delivered. What's the matter? I'm not wearing this armband. I don't care how big the deal is, I won't wear it. Okay, take it off. Take it off. 